Hey guys, even here and in today's video we got some really interesting bodybuilding updates and we are starting with a physique update of Stefan Matala. In case you guys didn't know, he started working with Patrick Tour in his offseason recently and this is the end of his offseason and his prep is about to start right now. And as you can see, he definitely did make some solid progress, like he definitely does look a lot bigger. Especially in the legs, I would say arms as well. Overall, he just looks wider, more massive, and his conditioning stayed really good. He did not get fat at all, but he definitely did grow. And that's very common with Patrick Tour's clients. I don't know how he does it, but you will notice that with his clients. Everybody stays very lean in the offseason while adding muscle. And then when they're prepping, they're still eating a ton of food, a ton of carbs, and they all get ripped. They all get shredded. So I don't know what Patrick is doing. I might hire him someday and figure it out. But as for right now, we got a physique update of Stefan Motala in which he did make some solid progress. And it seems like this guy is actually going to fulfill his potential sometime soon. I think it was a really good choice to hire somebody like Patrick Tour because lately he had great results with his guys. Not just great results, I would say great transformations. Just look at Keon Pearson winning the Mr. Olympia 212. Now recently John De La Rosa placing fourth at the Arnold Classic. Not so recently all the success with Ian Valier and uh, James Connison probably brought his best at Patrick Tour. So yeah, I mean this guy knows what he's doing and apparently what he's doing with uh, Stefan Motal right here is working. I mean, look at this most muscular right here. Look at Stefan's arms, man. He is truly starting to look like an open bodybuilder, more so than like a classic physique guy. This size, with this conditioning, I mean, this guy is gonna have so much trouble making the weight this year, but I guess, I hope he's going to be peeled once he does that. Keon Pearson started in classic physique and now he's winning the 212 Olympia. I think he would do really well in the open as well. I'm not sure about Stefan's height, but he's not as short as Keon, so I don't see him doing 212, but open division in a couple of years? Very, very possible and it does make a lot of sense. With this shape, with his freaking arms, I mean, these arms look like, I don't know, Phil Heath or Kevin Liveroni arms, right? Like, look at the triceps, how much they're hanging, and the biceps, the fullness, the roundness. And now, with his legs and overall size added, he does look really impressive. In case you forgot what he looked like last time he was on stage, here he is. So, you cannot deny the fact that he grew. He definitely did make some solid progress. I mean, we'll see how much will stay once he does a diet, but I think a lot will stay. And as you can see right here, his conditioning wasn't exactly 100%. He definitely could have been leaner, and he did make the weight. So now with this new tissue, and like, let's say, I don't know, 10 pounds of water and fat less, and let's say 10 pounds of muscle added, I think he's gonna be so much more impressive, and I'm pretty sure this year he's gonna win a pro show. He already did win a pro show, but he didn't go to the Mr. Olympia that year. I think this year he's gonna win a stronger pro show, and go to the Mr. Olympia and actually do some damage, because this guy has a ton of potential, and we all can see it. In the caption of his update, he says the off-season is over, it was very short, but particularly beneficial, because in a short space of time, I managed to increase my density. The prep work begins now, and uh, he tags Patrick Tour. So his prep begins now, and uh, even though his off-season was short, he still managed to make a lot of progress, and I feel like he made just enough progress. If he made more, I don't know if he could make the weight, because right now he looks probably maxed out for classic physique. So let's wait and see what he's gonna look like once he is peeled, and I believe with Patrick Tour, he's gonna be peeled to the bone, shredded and dry. But here is a physique update of his back, which was a bit of an issue for Stefan Matala. His back was kind of underdeveloped, which is basically the case with majority of bodybuilders, especially newer ones. And I think he did make progress in his back, but is there more room for progression? Absolutely. So after this competitive season, I think he should solely focus on bringing up that back without growing too much overall, because if he wants to stay in classic physique, he needs to stay at about this size and just try to improve details in his back, like bring up his lower lats a little, get a little bit wider, you know, just thicken up those lats, and if he does that, but before that, he gets conditioned, he shows us that he in fact can get shredded, 
if he brings those two things, conditioning and overall size and a little bit better back, I can see a bright future for this guy in classic physique, potentially like a top 5 in the world at the Mr. Olympia, I see that, what do you guys think? Next up we got a little physique update of Michal Krizo, whose prep is also starting right about now, he is prepping for Emperor Cup Spain, and this is what he looks like right now at the end of his offseason, uh, let's take a look, let's see if he made some actual progress. You guys know that I'm a huge fan of Mikel Krizo and his physique, especially his arms, but did he make progress in this offseason? I mean, I don't think so. I don't see a lot of change here. Now, here's the thing. What he does in the offseason is he trains a lot less than he does when he's prepping. Actually, when he's prepping, he's training every single body part twice a week which is a very high frequency, especially for somebody who is on that level of size, right? But what's crazy is his volume, he actually does a lot of volume, he doesn't go lower in volume when he does this high frequency type of program, no, no, he just trains everything more frequently with the same volume and the same intensity, but his intensity, I wouldn't say it's through the roof, I rarely see him go all the way to failure, but his volume and frequency are very high in his prep. In the offseason, his approach is much more relaxed. He takes everything down a notch, and I think that's why he really did not make a ton of progress. I think he's like, he's happy with the size he has. He's not trying to get any bigger, any, any better. He's already sponsored, he has great sponsors, he's already making progress in terms of placement at a Mr. Olympia without having some crazy difficult and super challenging off seasons. So I feel like this guy is like, you know, he's already doing very well, why would he risk something? I'm really not under the impression that he's like hungry to be the best in the world. He's happy where he is and he is very high, again 7th in the world. 7th at the Mr. Olympia, that's a huge achievement. So his off-seasons are actual off-seasons. He relaxes a little and then when it comes to prep time, he goes all out. And still, I don't think he's really going all out, but he's doing the best that he can. And he is such a genetic freak that he's actually making progress in the prep, I believe. He's probably not going to win the Mr. Olympia someday with this approach, but does he have the best arms in the world right now? Well, in my opinion, it's either him or Nick Walker, it's very close. The last time I made a video about this, I actually had Nick Walker as the best arms in the world, but now, I don't know, and after this prep, I don't know, we'll see, I might change my mind. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below about who has the best arms in the world right now. Here is how Nick feels about it, he says that he's not paying attention to that, which I believe Nick might not go down in history as one of the best arms ever, he could actually become the best bodybuilder in his era, it's a possibility, it's still not completely out of question, I'm not super hopeful, but it's still a possibility, as far as Mikhail Krizio winning the Mr. Olympia, I don't see that happening, but Nick Walker might do it, anyways guys, tell me down below, who do you have as the best arms ever, Krizio or Nick Walker? Since I mentioned Keon Pearson, here is what he looks like right now in his offseason, he did get a tiny bit chubby, but you know, he's still in great condition, and I think he's actually pushing his body, he's actually trying to get as big as possible. As far as I know, he had room in 212, he could have been bigger, so did Sean Clarida, who I feel like is making a lot of progress as well, but I'm pretty sure as long as Keon comes in a little bit improved, with let's say a little bit better conditioning, yeah, I don't see him losing that title, not with this crazy shape of his, and if he makes progress, which I believe he will, which I believe he's doing right now, yeah, I think he's there to stay. Next, we got a physique update of Martin Fitzwater, who is 4 weeks, less than 4 weeks out of Detroit Pro, and the question is, can he win this show? If he brings what he brought to Texas Pro 2022, yeah, yeah, I think he would be the favorite to win, because that edition of Martin Fitzwater was freaking amazing, it was crazy, I just don't really have the impression that he's gonna be that good this year. Is his conditioning good for 4 weeks out? I would say yeah, conditioning is there, but I feel like he had more of a pop back when he was prepping with Branch Warren. 
I could be mistaken though, maybe I'm comparing him to his version from the stage, because of course he's gonna look better once he does a peak week and puts a tan on and pumps up and carbs up, he's probably flat here, but I do feel like him being coached by Brent Warren, that had a good effect on Martin, and those guys fell apart unfortunately, uh, but Martin is training with Brett Wilkin again, and they're killing it, man, those two guys, when they train together, they are freaking intense, so I think Martin is coming back together, I mean, is he gonna look good at Detroit Pro? Yeah, absolutely, but the question is really, can he win the show, can he win the Detroit Pro? Here is Brett Wilkin filming him uh, after the training, I guess, yeah, yeah, I think Martin has a chance of winning this show against Goodwito, once again, if he brings what he brought to Texas Pro, or, you know, at least close to that, or hopefully better, it's been two years, I would hope he made progress, but we'll see, um, as far as the other guys doing the show, Mohamed Shaban was supposed to do the show, but I think he's taking a year off, and I think John De La Rosa is also out, the last time they asked Ford who is doing the show, he didn't mention John, so I guess John is uh, done for this season, I I'm not sure about that, uh, but uh, yeah, good Vito is doing, and I think he's like the favorite in Martin as well, there is some talk that James Honnissett might jump in, and the last time he competed against Martin, uh, James won, it was Arnold UK 2022, but that was not Martin at his best, it wasn't as good of a peak as it was in Texas, but Justin Rodriguez is doing it here, he is right now, and it's crazy that this guy changed a coach once again, as far as I know, Abdullah was prepping uh, Justin for the Arnold, and uh, now... He is coached by this guy right here, Justin Jacoby. He is the coach of uh, Tony Burton, for example. But I don't think it matters uh, which coach is gonna prep Justin. I think he's done. He's ready to retire. He has been for a while. As far as his shape for the Arnold, he was good. Like, conditioning, fullness, it was all good. It's just his waist, mainly, and certain body parts that have simply lost the shape. So I don't think this guy is a contender to win this show, but... Yeah, he's doing it, and he has a new coach, so I thought it was interesting to share it here. Whatever you guys think about Detroit Pro and who's gonna win it, tell me down below. Do you think it's gonna be Martin Fitzwalter? But I'm also really curious to hear what people think about Stefan Matala. Do you believe he has the potential to become like the next uh, Wesley Wissers? You know, with some improvements and good conditioning, can he win big shows and be one of the top guys in the world? Because I think he has the tools. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more bodybuilding content like this, subscribe to the channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.